Hey comic book collectors, tonight on Comic Book Spotlight we're looking at Master Comics number 25, one of the greatest covers of the Golden Age. Let's check it out. All right, Master Comics number 25. I've wanted to take a look at this cover with you guys for a long time because I think when you put it in the historical context of World War II, it's one of the greatest covers ever. It has more intensity uh, than you normally see in a Golden Age cover, and I just love it. I've owned several copies over the years. I had kind of a mid-grade copy for a while. Um, eventually, I, I upgraded to a 9.0. I think it was the Rockford copy. Um, and I parted with that. Unfortunately, I had another big book that I wanted to buy. I needed to raise some funds, and so I chose that one. Uh, I regret parting with that, but it, luckily in March of this year, this 7.0 came up in a heritage auction, and it's a beautiful copy. Most of the defects are on the back cover. The front cover looks at least 8.0, um, and it's very vibrant in colors. So let's take a closer look at it. I really want you to see some of the fine details of this cover. Okay, Master Comics number 25, cover dated April 1942. This is a 7.0 with cream to off-white pages. As you can see, it has a minor amount of color touch on the spine of the cover, and that is the main reason that this copy was marked down uh, to 7.0. As you can see, it presents like a higher grade copy, but that color touch knocked down the grade. Got uh, Otto Binder story, Phil Bard and Ken Battlefield art, Mac Raboy cover and art. One of the great things about Raboy is that he did interior artwork as well, not just covers. Okay, so what I want to center on is that cover date, April 1942. So if you have a cover date of April uh, 1942, the book probably hit the stands around the end of February. Usually it's about a six week window um, where the book actually hits the stands prior to the cover date. So, so end, of April, or end of February 1942, put that into historical context. That's just a few months after Pearl Harbor. So when you look at this cover, what you see in my mind is a visceral reaction to Pearl Harbor and the Japanese attack. If you look at the, if you look at Captain Marvel Jr., who is usually um, kind of a light-hearted character, look at his hands. His hands are like outstretched claws. His mouth is open as if he's screaming. He's got that intense look in his eyes. And look what he's done to this squadron of planes. He's flown through them. He's already destroyed this one and this one. This pilot is falling from his plane and he's heading towards this plane to do the same thing. This is a really intense cover. This is Mac Raboy seeking vengeance of some kind over the events in Pearl Harbor. And to me, that makes this book so much more interesting than many other Golden Age comics. I just love the intensity of this cover. I think it sets it above 99% of other Golden Age covers. This was a moment in history and Raboy wanted to express his anger at Japan for what happened. I think that's just awesome. I don't think there's any other cover featuring Captain Marvel Jr. where he appears this fierce this angry, he's like an animal at this point, just seeking revenge. 
Captain Marvel Jr. smashes Jap invasion, a real scene from this issue. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at the back cover. Not as exciting as the front cover, but still pretty cool. America on the March. Mechanics Illustrated keeps you abreast of your nation's great war effort. So you can subscribe to this magazine. On sale at all newsstands. You can look at condition. There's a little piece missing at the very top left corner. Otherwise, the back cover is pretty sharp. It's a nice book. So this is only the fifth appearance of Captain Marvel Jr. in Master Comics. He appeared in, in, uh, in this title for quite a long time. Many years. Take another close look at the condition of this issue. This copy, I should say. The reds really pop on this copy. Actually, all the colors do. That's what I like about this particular copy. It's only a 7.0, but it presents so much better. Now, some people are going to look at that note, that uh, minor amount of color touch on the spine, and they're going to say, hey, why isn't this in a purple label? How come this gets a blue label? And uh, CGC decided in its early days that they would allow a very minor amount of color touch on a, a universal label. But they always point it out so you know it's there. It's a little bit controversial. An argument can be made that a book with any kind of restoration should go in a purple label. But that's the decision they made. Such an intense cover. So that's my spotlight on Master Comics number 25. If you're a Golden Age collector, you might want to have a copy of this in your collection if you're into World War II history. Um, I happen to love war covers, especially superhero war covers, so this really fits my collection well. As far as value, uh, I paid about $1,700 for this 7.0. Uh, so you can figure value is somewhere between $1,500 and $1,900. Uh, in higher grades, it's going to go for quite a bit more. Uh, there was a either 8.5 or 9.0 that sold last September, and that went up to five or $6,000. So the book has escalated in value. When I bought my 9.0 10 years ago, maybe, I think I paid about uh, two grand for it. So it's a good book as an investment. It's a great book to own just for the quality of the cover and the interior. The great thing about Mac Rub Boy is that he did interiors. You'll find a lot of Golden Age artists like, uh, like Schoenberg, for example, who did an amazing uh, library of covers. He's, he's one, of, one, of, one of my favorite cover artists, but you don't see him doing interior artwork too much, if at all. Um, he pretty much was hired just to do covers. Um, but Raboy, he did a lot of interior work, which is fantastic. So get a copy of this book. It's wonderful. I've recently rediscovered Master Comics. I'm trying to complete issues 21 to 41. So that's 21 issues, and I'm one third of the way there so far. So I need to pick up another 14 issues. So I'm hoping to pick up a few before uh, Comic-Con in San Diego, and then I'm hoping to find maybe a few issues at the convention. Uh, so maybe I can be half done by the end of the year or something like that. I just love that run of Raboy covers. They're mostly war covers, war themed at least. Um, some of them are very, very tough to find. There are a few that have only six or seven copies in the census. So I anticipate those being probably the last ones that I find. Um, others, others are more uh, prevalent. This one actually, there was quite a few copies out there. I think there was like 35 or approximately 35 copies in the census. So you can find Master Comics number 25 and I would recommend it. 
So that's it for Comic Book Spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click, please like, please respond, and uh, I'll see you on Facebook. I'll see you on the message boards, and I'll see you at a convention near you. Have a good night. Take care.